As today is the day of Pentecost, our second reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles, the second chapter, verses 1 to 21. Now, the Jewish people had celebrated the festival of Pentecost long before the events recounted in our text for today. The festival was marked by the presentation or offering to God of the first sheaf of wheat from the crop. This presented an opportunity for thanksgiving and also a prayer that God would allow the rest of the crop to come in at due time. The festival was held approximately 50 days, thus the Greek prefix penta, 50 days after Passover. Therefore, it was also associated with the Exodus journey of the people of Israel from Egypt. And on that journey into the wilderness, 50 days after Passover, they came to Mount Sinai, the place where Moses had received the law from God. And so together, these two ideas created a festival of thanksgiving and hope, along with a recommitment to the new way of life initiated by God. All of that would have been, quote, in the air, so to speak, for those who encountered the Holy Spirit in our text for today, as well as for those who first heard of this extraordinary account. This is the first fruits of a new community initiated by God with thanksgiving and hope. So let us then, with fresh ears, hear this word of God to us today. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they ask, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When we were growing up, my brother played the organ. We had a small organ in our home on which he practiced. 
He took organ lessons at a neighboring church to ours in town. And all of those organs were electric organs. No magnificent pipe organs like we have here at Reed Memorial. Now, over the course of my ministry, several of the churches that I've served have had pipe organs, but I never really paid too much attention to them, assuming that all organs worked the same as the one in my parents' living room. It was not until I began serving here that I learned that the sounds from this organ are not produced by the organ console. Because all I knew were electric organs, I assumed that the sound of each note was produced in the console and then expelled out of the pipes. You know, the bigger the pipes must mean the larger, the louder the sound. But that is not how it works at all. Not at all. Instead, there is a whole pressurized air chamber in a room off the fellowship hall. It's not even here in the sanctuary. And the fancy machine back there, it generates air under pressure. And then as Payson plays the keys, the entryway to the various pipes is uncovered. And the air rushes through the pipes, causing vibration. And the air-induced vibrations produce the sounds that we hear. Thus, through the pipes, the room itself sings. I had no idea that a pipe organ produces sound only through its wind supply, or as some would say, its breath of life. So as I prayed about the connections today between Pentecost and Sacred Music Sunday, I was drawn to the sounds in this text. Have you ever listened for the sounds of Pentecost? The disciples are all gathered together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came the sound of the rush of a violent wind. All of them were filled then with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak in languages. And at this sound, a crowd gathers to hear what's going on. Each one hears them speaking in the native language of each. Members of the crowd begin posing questions to one another. Some of them even sneer at all of these sounds, assuming that the disciples are filled with new wine. But then Peter stands up and speaks. He addresses them in a way we assume that all could understand. Yes, this is a crazy, chaotic, sound-filled scene. All because the Holy Spirit shows up. Now, in Greek, the word for spirit is pneuma. And in Hebrew, it is ruach. You might be able to hear how both of those words sound like a breath. Pneuma, ruach. Both words, in addition to being translated as spirit, can also be translated as wind or breath. So in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the ruah, the pneuma, the wind, the breath of God moves over the face of the water. In our text for today, when God creates a new people to carry the good news of the gospel to the ends of the earth, the ruach, the pneuma, the wind, the breath of God fills the entire room. Yes, when the breath of God, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit shows up, amazing things happen. And so it is today. On this Sacred Music Sunday, we celebrate the ruach, the pneuma, the wind, the breath of God. When the Holy Spirit shows up, the entire sanctuary begins to sing. The air through the pipes and the brass, the vibrations of the bells, the piano, the timpani, every breath moving through the vocal cords of the choir, all inspiration, 
all because the Holy Spirit shows up. There's something about music, isn't there, created by the breath of God, which speaks to our souls in ways deeper than mere words. The great 19th century theologian, who 20th century theologian Karl Barth, who wrote volumes and volumes of words and theological dogmatics and treatises, who had read all the words of all the theologians who had gone before, still began every morning by listening to Mozart. He found such inspiration in Mozart's music that he even remarked once, he said, you know, if I ever get to heaven, I would first of all seek out Mozart. And only then after inquire after Augustine and St. Thomas and Luther and Calvin and Schleiermacher. Such is the gift of the Ruach, the Pneuma, the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. And yet, my friends, in these brief words this morning, I I do not want you to believe that you have just been the observer of the Holy Spirit and her gifts. No, that breath which you just took filled your lungs with the Holy Spirit. As you exhale, the ruma, the punuma, the Spirit will move across your vocal cords. Enabling you to produce sound. Perhaps you might feel the urge to lift up your voice and sing praises to the Lord. Or maybe the sound you make will be a word of life, uh, of hope, of faith, of thanksgiving. And perhaps you might even speak a word of gospel. Like those first disciples whose voices were filled with the Holy Spirit so that peoples near and far might hear the good news. For as beautiful as any music or sound you hear in this sanctuary today might be, it still falls flat if your heart and voice are not tuned to praise as a result. The choir does not sing, the handbells do not play, the piano does not make melody, Payson does not play the organ merely for our enjoyment. No, they play as an offering to God. And so that we all might be inspired to also offer our hearts and minds and voices to the Lord of heaven and earth. We live in a world with deep, deep divisions. And this divided world needs the ruach, the pneuma, the breath of God to speak from your lips and from mine. Yes, we need the music of that first Pentecost today. As we sang together in the final verse of that second hymn, only the Spirit's power can fit us for this hour. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Instruct, inspire, unite, and make us see the light. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Instruct us, inspire us, unite us. May your breath be our breath. May we speak and sing and play words that inspire, that unite this amazing world. Be present in our lives and transform them this day. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.